Bro, this is the dumbest video I've ever seen by, uh, by Devin Nash. Like, actually the dumbest video. It's ridiculous. Actually, no, this is not the dumbest video. I've seen some pretty stupid videos from him. I think Devin Nash has a lot of, like, insight into, like, the business side of streaming or whatever. But I don't think he has any understanding at all of, like, the, the morality of creating content online and the implications of what that means and, like, the roles and responsibilities of content creators that they have towards their audience and they don't have towards their audience. I don't think he understands, you know, the quote-unquote parasocial relationship or whatever. And it's fine to not understand that, but then you talk with such superlative language. Like, um, he was like, there was that one video, it was like about Amaranth or whatever, um, and he was talking about like how Destiny got banned or something like that. And he's like, the world seems to be shifting its goalposts for what it deems is acceptable versus what's not. And some of it, rightfully so. Like, what the fuck? How, how do you not realize how hypocritical that sentence is just by itself? Like, you didn't even say two sentences that contradict each other. The, the words in the same sentence that you used to... If you didn't contradict yourself, you wouldn't have been able to... You wouldn't even have been able to complete a grammatically correct sentence. That's how blatant your contradiction was. I, and I don't know how you don't understand that. It's, it's, it's very obviously said... Because there's no reason to say that. Think about that. If you're being analytical, there's no reason to say, oh, and rightfully so. The only reason you'd say that is so is for the little extra internet brownie points. So, like, the people get offended at everything and go like, oh, wait, is he trying to say that? Oh, no, he's good. He's good. He's one of us. He gets offended at things. You know, he, he thinks things should be removed just like us. So, uh, yeah, we'll, I'll keep watching him, you know. And so they won't get mad at you. It's literally, oh, hold up. Okay, cool. Look at this. But to do that, and by the end of it, why I don't care about art at all, and I want to explain something that I think is so much bigger, especially- I don't care about art. Like, what kind of content creator says that, dude? What kind of content creator? Like, sh I get what he's trying to, maybe I don't get what he's trying to say, but like, if you're trying to go like, oh, I don't care about art in this context or whatever, then that's understandable. Is, and it's that, like, you're trying to make a separate point, not about the art. But, like, saying, I don't care about art, like, over and over again, it's, for any kind of content creator, it should set off, like, red flags in your head. Like, why am I even saying this? Like, whoa, hold on. It's, like, some crazy stuff I'm saying, you know? It's crazy to say that as a content creator. And that's the thing. Devin Nash is not really, a, like, a content creator. Like, he, he says, like, a lot of, like... He, <laughs> He says like stupid thing after stupid thing, and it's like it is the only one of its kind, and so it has a non fungible value, at least to me, right? That you know, if somebody came up to me and said, "I'll pay you five dollars for that jacket," I would not go for it because I like this. What the hell kind of stupid argument was that? Trying to describe something as non fungible because, dude, that's so stupid. I'm. I don't even want to address that because I'd be sounding patronizing I'd be sounding like I'm talking to an idiot the way I'm responding but that's how I have to respond because it's such an idiotic thing to say like if someone comes to me and they say hey I want to buy your house for ten thousand dollars and I'd be like no and they'd be like oh I'll give you five hundred thousand dollars and I'd be like okay we're getting there I wouldn't say oh my house is non-fungible because it, it requires a higher price or maybe it's non-fungible because I have some sentimental value towards it. How does that make any sense? Oh. This was the dumbest part of the whole thing. It's like the way Devin Nash makes videos is like, he's kind of a leech, honestly, on the community. He's kind of a leech. He keeps making these clickbait videos over and over and over again. And I, like, I want to like react to some stuff. I was looking at it, I'm like, damn, I can't react to Devin Nash. It just pisses me off. Like, this guy doesn't know what he's doing. All the world is talking about NFTs. NFTs and cryptocurrency and tokens and all that structure of the gaming world. Video right now, and you play video games for 15 hours. He's like issuing a challenge. For a week or more, you will buy an NFT related to gaming within the next five years. That's my challenge to you. That's not a challenge. That's a prediction. He's not saying, I challenge you to not buy an NFT. That's a challenge. But he's like, listen to the whole thing. 
watching this video from what I think everyone is missing about NFTs. I'm going to issue you a challenge. I think if you're watching this video right now and you play video games for 15 hours a week or more, you will buy an NFT. Is that a challenge or like a declaration like you will buy an I'm hypnotizing you. You will buy an NFT. Related to gaming within the next five years. That's my challenge to you. You can leave a comment if you do or if you don't. But I He's reading off of his little checklist. He's reading off of his little... He doesn't make content in a way where somebody who intuitively, you know, is passionate about making content would do it. He makes content like a 45-year-old who doesn't know anything about content goes and they go, oh, I can make a lot of money if I, if I get into this space. Um, let me have a... Let me analyze everything and look at everything as like a, you know, from like a, a an analytical perspective rather than like, you know, being intuitive about it um and and having some heart in my content let me go through my checklist oh issue a challenge issue a call to action oh got that thing checked off the list and he's just going through one after another after it's like at the next five years that's my challenge to you that's not a challenge he's just you can leave a comment if you do or if you don't but i think he's clearly reading you see his eyes he's reading you will i'm going to explain what i mean by that and how it's going to work in the context of NFTs. And so stay tuned if you want a in-depth video, which I don't think this has been covered in relation to the gaming industry. Definitely has. Okay, hello. Gambling has been one of the most prevalent issues in the new media world. Yeah, this is a, this is a dead issue at this point. Hello, everybody. In this video, I wanna make a definitive guide on how to grow a small brand up to a larger brand or how to take a medium-sized brand and grow it even more. If you are a creator who is just getting started in various different social media platforms or you are an established creator looking for some good advice about how to build a brand, this is the video for you. My name is Devin Nash. I have built brands myself as well as coached hundreds of people through building brands. I currently run an agency called Novo.tv, which is a a creative agency that partners sponsors and creators together and we'll talk a little bit more about that later but i want to just get started right away so thank you for coming let's go we're going to separate this into three sections uh, the first one's going to be considerations for growing a brand the second one is going to be what i call the zero to one strategy which is a tactical strategy for growing your brand and the third is going to be a what the syndication strategy and platform strategy of where you should create and why as well as uh, a full strategy discussion of like how to think about building a brand so by the end of this video it's going to be comprehensive because all of my videos are but you will have a comprehensive idea you'll have a full idea of how to build this brand if you are serious about doing this you may be thinking oh i can just go click on the four minute, five minute video that is going to tell me in a highly edited fashion exactly how to grow a brand. And guess what? That is loser mentality. You are never going to grow on or crash course on growing a brand that is going to, and um, hopefully you, you take some notes and you can leave in the comment section if this worked for you or if you started using these for the sake of the algorithm. I'm going to make this the right information part. We're going to start slow. And this is basically just in order to, in order to, to build a brand, you, you kind of first have to understand like what your brand is. And I think that you get there by asking yourself some key tactical questions. So this is going to be a pretty straightforward section. The first one is going to be what makes me unique and how do I stand out slash what am I doing different? All right. All so right. Wait, 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 wait. Let me get my own thing going. pretty obvious question and it is but it's one that i find most of the small creators that i interact with who have been doing something for a long time have not successfully answered right right i see that i get that i haven't thought about it very much that's a mistake on my part i should have thought about it more thought about it a little only a tiny bit it's just as much as the average person thinks about it in passing but what makes me unique and how do i stand out means that if you're just parroting the same information that a ton of different creators are parroting across their platforms, or you're just kind of making content 
for the sake of making it. Like, oh, I want to teach business or I want to teach fitness, right? And you're not speaking from your heart about what makes you unique. A lot of content creators think that they need to go very wide in, or, in order to start building a brand, especially like as a small brand that you need to go very wide and appeal to the most amount of people possible. Yeah, that's a stupid strategy. I should just take what I know about music and just apply it here. You're not gonna, you're not gonna become big by going after like Taylor Swift's fan base and going like, well, she does this, so I should make music the same way. No, you make music based on the based on what nobody else is doing, so that way you appeal to the crowd that nobody else is appealing to. This is actually the opposite of what you need to do. What you need to do is you need to focus on a niche of people, a specific niche of people that are going to identify very strongly with what you're trying to say. So you might start out just appealing to people within a five-year age demographic and, and one particular gender, right? Or you might start out with people who only buy a certain type of thing. Or you might start out with people who are only interested in one subsection, like painting Warhammer 40K figurines, okay? Like it's gonna be something pretty niche. And from there, you're going to build that out as it gets bigger, you'll figure out how to reach larger and larger audiences. Or maybe you'll be fine with just the audience you have and you'll find ways to monetize that audience effectively. So um, either way though, in either case, you have to answer the question, what am I going to bring to this that is going to make it unique, right? So like, let's take a fitness influencer who's just getting started, for example. There's a billion different ways on how to lift. There's a billion different ways on what health foods you're going to try, but there's probably not a channel that is discussing exactly how to build only lean muscle in 20 to let's say 40 year old plus men right like that's a really interesting topic that every 40 year old might be interested in that it's looking to, looking to and there's probably way fewer channels that are i'm sure one exists on youtube about that i'm sure they it's such do a massive platform for example but there are probably way fewer channels like that than and, and so maybe you can bring that unique take to that because you are a 40 year old man or something that has successfully done that so um likewise let's say you're a 15 to 16 year old girl and you're trying to um look more toned or you're trying to get fit, um, maybe appealing to teenagers in, in that, in that, and speaking to them in that particular way is what makes you unique. Um, maybe you have, a, 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 like you have to really sit down like with a notepad, my favorite, uh, my favorite application in all the land, and you have to write down the things that you think you bring to the table that are unique. Now you might say, well, Devin, I don't bring anything to the table that's unique. I don't believe that. I, I, I've never met anyone where that's true. I think that every single person has a unique voice. I think they just have to find it. And um, a lot of that is like the sort of fear working that you have to go through. But you have to do this. You have to figure out what you're different. So a good example of that for me is I have started very niche in what I do. I began by teaching people how to grow on Twitch. Just like this is how you grow a brand on Twitch. And then I expanded to teaching it how to do that across the board. Um, and now I broadly do marketing and advertising and attention, how to get attention on different types of platforms and kind of what platforms are doing, as well as like any kind of news and meta that's related to that. It's a pretty broad topic and I'll, uh, maybe I'll even expand later, but that in of itself is a niche and does very well for me because I'm an authority in that place. So you, that's a kind of a corollary to this, which is why am I an authority? Devin Nash is not saying anything specific, like uh, not specific. He's not saying anything profound here, nothing new. It's just nice to have this kind of reminder. That's why I'm watching this. It's just a reminder of all these things that I don't usually think about. Um, slash, what value can I provide? Now, you might not be doing something educational. You might be doing something to entertainment. But even so, like, why can pe why, why are you entertaining? Like, what brings you to the table? Are you over the top? Are you silly? Are you, are, are you like, just, like, writing really good jokes? Are you um, a really good reactor, right? Like, all this stuff is stuff that you should quantify as you start to define what brand you are going to be. The second question to ask is what platform am I going to focus on? There are tons of choices here. The ones that I'm covering for the sake of this video are YouTube, Twitch, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, new media platforms, because that's what I understand. There are other places to build brands. You can build a brand in traditional advertising, you can build a brand in paid. But for this video, these are the expertises I have, so that's what I'm sharing with you. Generally speaking, the I'm sure they got their. I'm sure they get paychecks from OnlyFans too. But this is going to come down. I'll also add uh, written, right? So like things like LinkedIn blogs or uh, Medium type stuff. 
this is going to come down to where you think your core competencies are and where you feel really strong. If you're like a comedic person, like maybe you wanna be get started on TikTok or Instagram, which are better for like short form content, like 30 to second to one minute videos that are going to make that kind of entertaining impact. Maybe you're getting started in magic or something where you wanna show people magic tricks, it's very successful on TikTok and it's better with those short form videos. Maybe you wanna do more long form stuff, like the kind of stuff that I do where I talk really comprehensively about subjects. You wanna consider something like YouTube, um, or LinkedIn, if you're doing some kind of like educational type stuff. And maybe if you're doing a brand that is like um, featuring yourself, where maybe you're just like a really good looking guy or girl, uh, maybe Instagram is for you, right? So thinking about what platform you're going to focus on, a lot of people have been kind of sucked in by some other content creators that suggest to you that you should be syndicating and creating content on a ton of different platforms. I don't think that's true. I think you should focus on one platform. You should build consistently on that platform and focus on quality and understanding it. And then you should syndicate to two maximum platforms in addition to that. We're gonna talk about that in the syndication. Space. I disagree. I disagree. Section three. So here, um, you're gonna be wanting to think about what platform am I going to focus on and where am I going to sit? And the, the, the way to think about that is, okay, I feel like I make the best amount of impact in video form or just audio or podcasting. You don't want to make a decision. Here's, here's a big, big one, okay? You don't want to make a decision based on how successful you think the platform is or is going to be. That is a mistake. So if you think that like YouTube is your answer because YouTube is the is the highest yeah, that's growth stupid. potential, that's a macro thing, right? Just like if you think that you should stream. Yeah, no one's gonna get two billion subscribers. You should stream absolutely on Twitch for live streaming. On, on, in a macro sense, that's true, but you're not in macro. You're not, you're not, a, like, you're not the industry, you're not economics. You are one person. So for you, it's going to be where your strength is. A lot of people make that mistake. Like, if anything, in a lot of cases, it's the opposite. I know people who have found zero success streaming on Twitch. They, tw they stream to one viewer, usually zero, but sometimes one. They go on Trovo or some, some other streaming platform, and they get like five to ten viewers. So, Oh, I should start on the best platform. But there's no best platform. There's just your platform. There are people making millions of dollars off of every single one of these techniques, right? It, so it doesn't matter. It, do, it doesn't matter. Like, as long as the, there's some attention there, the, it's going to be a platform that could work for you. So, so, so get that out of your head and instead focus on where you're best and, and, and where you think you're going to do. What is my actual product and service? which may again seem like an obvious question, but um, just going through some of the problems that I run into with small to medium-sized creators is they don't actually understand this. So what value am I providing to a group of people? So I, I, you should be able to explain this really easily, and when anybody asks, you should be able to answer it almost immediately. But surprisingly, like it, it, for a lot of channels, you might be building like a gaming channel. Like you, you may not know. Like maybe you're just uploading gaming videos. You have no idea what you're actually providing. I can tell you in 10 seconds what this channel is about, right? This channel is about giving you the number one information on marketing and advertising. You won't find anything better anywhere else. That's what I do. That's uh, like, the, the, like if it comes down to marketing or advertising, which includes brand building, that kind of stuff, that's what I do. Super simple, right? That's my product. That's my service. And I just, I, it's my service really because I don't really sell it. I just kind of talk about it here. So my service is that. Your service could be entertaining people through awesome gaming clips where like in 15 seconds, you're gonna see the craziest Valorant play you've ever imagined. Or in 30 seconds on a short, you're gonna see the coolest magic trick ever and you're gonna to wanna to subscribe for it, right? That's a good product or service. So that's the way to kind of think about this. You wanna have a firm idea of what that is because that contextualizes all of the content you're gonna create around it. So, um, Next and lastly, since you understand your business, you understand your platform, and you understand what makes you unique, you want to understand who is my customer. So what is my demographic? And importantly, where does my customer spend the most time? I already Top wrote that down. Three places. This is really important because it might inform what those two uh, extra places you're gonna syndicate to are. So for example, if you might wanna get a start on YouTube, but you find that your type of customer, uh, let's say you're getting a, you're a, a dancer and you wanna start uh, dancing professionally. 
you might think of do you might be the best of by doing like syndicated YouTube videos, like like highly produced videos, and then, and then TikTok and Instagram. And syndicating those videos to something like TikTok for 30 second shorts because you know that your audience actually lives there and wants to watch dancing videos there. So figuring out where your audience spends the, the most amount of their time informs you as to where you where you could go and how you could start building a brand. It's also gonna help you with the zero to one strategy that um, I'm going to uh, discuss in just a moment. But overall, answering these questions are kind of the first basic questions you need to answer to build a brand. And beyond that, I wouldn't overthink it too much because I think what happens to a lot of people is they're just not gonna get started. You could answer these questions in 20 minutes and, and just by brainstorming it, and then go ahead and, and, and go to your creation. Like, d don't stop and, and think about this stuff too long. You don't need a, a 10 page business plan or whatever. Most people don't even do this kind of work and, and, they, and the people that succeed are just the people that are like uploading and, and making consistent stuff and just improving the quality and introspectively like looking at like what makes it better. Okay, so don't worry about that too much. Just get it done, um, have a good idea of it, and then go on to zero to one strategy. So section two, zero to one strategy, is I, I first heard of this strategy, uh, or, or just the way, it, the way it being called, one is greater than zero, um, from Gary Vaynerchuk. I don't think enough people are using this strategy, and he actually doesn't talk about zero to one as much as he should, because it, it is, I think, at least as far as I'm concerned as a marketer, this is the number one way to grow a brand from zero. And it's, just, it's just objectively great. So what is zero to one? So zero to one is based on two principles, okay? Principle number one is deeply connecting with potential people, viewers, customers, who interact with you. And number two, putting yourself in places where discussions about what you do are happening. Ooh. Or go through both. So what zero to one basically is, is it means you are hand-to-hand -hand combat, going out onto platforms, commenting, responding, replying to people, and as much interaction as possible, you're getting yourself out there. Here's the key though. You're not doing it with an intent or an ask. So if you reply to like a Reddit thread, you are not going in and saying, hey, by the way, follow me on my YouTube channel. You're just there to provide value. If you're on a Twitter thread and you answer a Twitter thread and you reply, you're there to make a, a 140 character or whatever the limit is now, valuable tweet, and then you leave it and there's no ask in it. So way too many people are asking right away. How many times have you been on a YouTube comment section or, and you see, hey, look at my YouTube channel, go follow it. On a Twitch stream, hey, go follow my live Twitch stream, I'm streaming right now. How many times have, has anybody actually grown a brand um, by doing that, zero, right? So I am not talking about advertising. I'm talking about giving legitimate value in your, uh, in your area. So let, let's um, use a couple of platforms to exemplify how this works. So let's take Twitter, for example, okay? So find ongoing threads, or I like to call them meta topics, and respond to them with insightful commentary. And you're gonna set a goal of doing this X per day, like maybe three times per day. So let's say that you're teaching business education. You find three ongoing threads that are going on about like how to grow a business right now. Super easy to do, just use the Twitter search function. And you reply with your, your insight, just the best thing you can provide. Like um, maybe I, I look at some threads about grow, how to grow on Twitter and I just reply on the thread and I say, um, yeah, I think that growing on Twitter right now is uh, predominantly long form threads. And I think that it's, uh, that's some of the people that are doing the best at that, right? Um, that maybe I just reply something like that. Now, again, no ask, but you, you better believe that I'm going to have links to everything that I want to do on my actual bio. So the idea is that people will see that, they'll be like, that was valuable, I got something from that. And then they click through. I just thought of a joke, but I can't say it. it's, it's, it'll get me banned. It's a funny to joke. Your, and they follow you or they engage with you at that point. You're basically trusting the, the potential customer to come to you because they, are, um, th they, they have seen the value you provide. You don't need to ask them to do it. They've seen the value you provide. And this is the easiest way to go at zero because you have no audience right now. 
And, and, and by the way, even if you're like a, a small creator that just like can't seem to grow, this is where you want to be. So if you're like a, a, a YouTube YouTuber and you're getting like, you know, 100 views per video or something, uh, or you're like a Twitch streamer, you're getting like 10 viewers per video, like you can 10x yourself overnight by doing this because you'll just find people that see you as valuable and engage with you, right? So find ongoing topics and meta topics and respond to them with insightful commentary. Uh, start your own long form threads on topics related to your brand. Long form threads are a, an incredibly successful, uh, like it, people have been incredibly successful with this. It's a super easy way to start growing a brand on Twitter these days. I don't know how much longer it'll last. So for the duration of this video, at the current time of this recording, this is the most effective way to grow on Twitter. I'm gonna show you Sahil Bloom, who has grown a 100,000 person newsletter simply by doing these long form threads. A long form thread is where you give some kind of value in multiple threads. You can just go through here and you can see that each one of these is a separate tweet with its own separate engagement. You can see like on this one, there's like over 2,000, 3,000 retweets. And then your engagement will drop because people will stop reading naturally, but um, it's a very powerful way to grow a brand. And in my own community, of uh, um, uh, both on Patreon and people that are following me uh, that are doing this to an incredible degree. Small creators are growing quite a bit by posting, even gamer gaming creators, like posting commentary about something like Destiny 2 or Overwatch or Valorant or something in it. Uh, it, it doesn't have to be just like education. Like you may think that this is, it, it does turn out that a lot of people that are using this strategy are educators. However, th it is absolutely successful for people that are like in gaming or meta topics or whatever. Twitter rates these really highly and you literally just reply to yourself and go through. So creating long form threads are, is, is a really great way to get discovered, especially using hashtags early. That's a, that's a, that's a very good way to go on Twitter. Uh, likewise, you could join Twitter spaces. This is kind of a something I don't see anybody doing, but it's actually crazy. I was a, really interested in Web3. I mean, I'm still interested in Web3. I just I can't talk about it because like they'll come. The comment section people, they'll come. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. We can't talk about that. But I was joining those Twitter spaces, and I was super surprised. I was getting hundreds of follows just by being there. <coughs> Interesting. And I was like, wait, what? Why? And it just people were clicking on my profile and going through. So again, that concept of be being in the right place and trusting people that you're adding value. Um, how about on like Reddit, okay? Um, how would we use this kind of principle? So subscribe to and post in channel uh, subreddits and add actual value, right? Choose three to five subreddits that relate to what you do and post there. Now it's especially important on Reddit that you follow the don't ask about and promote your own stuff. Reddit hates that, subreddit admins hate that even more. If you are going to do it, follow the general guideline of 10 to one, which means you post 10 times value with no ask or advertisement, and maybe one time your own video, whatever. There are a lot of people that have succeeded by not doing 10 to one and just spamming their stuff in on, on different reddits i mean you know your mileage may vary this is just how i like to do it i don't generally do like gray hat black hat marketing i i, I think authentic marketing where you really provide value is going to show itself up and eventually is going to be like the right thing so i kind of operate from that basis your mind might go to different places you can try different things you know i, I i'm agnostic to it i don't i don't care Quora and Ask websites. So these are um, participating in as many questions as your niche allows. So there, if you go to any of these like kind of Ask websites where people are trying to find out like an answer to a question, like um, uh, how do I get to 15% body fat in six months as a 25 year old male, right? There's like tons of questions like that. And you're, you're in the fitness industry, you go answer that question. And again, just provide as much, I mean, you are the expert, right? Like you, you've already decided your niche is this and you've decided why you're an authority, right? So you, you sh there shouldn't be no question that you can provide value by answering this question. So go in, deliver as much value on the answer to that question as you can, and then get out, right? Now, the zero to one strategy works more most effectively if you set up some parameters for how many times you're going to do this per day. So on Twitter, this is really easy. Just say, like, I'm gonna reply to three, make it reasonable, right? I'm gonna re reply to three different tweets uh, every single day. 
I'm just going to go through my time. And you're like, you're going to you're going to cultivate your timeline so that the people that you're that are thought leaders, you want to reply to those people with a valuable comment. Believe it or not, valuable comments stand out everywhere because they're so it just so much on these platforms is trash. People are desperate to consume good, positive interactions. Almost everything on Twitter, Reddit, whatever is just it's just dog water. It's just bad. So if you actually take the time to build valuable comments and and, and post them, you will be surprised that people will click through and they'll start following you um, and, and they'll check out the stuff that you have. It, like it, it is, I, I've seen this happen again and again with people who are starting from zero, and and everybody that is at zero with their brand or is a middle-sized creator wanting to get more presence, um, and, and out there, and or, or or is a person who's trying to like a middle-sized creator but they don't feel like they're an expert yet should be doing this, and, and it's a very easy strategy. You just kind of set yourself up with how. Um, That's the thing. Someone someone like Devin Nash would not know the intricacies of imposter syndrome. But you would know things like this. It's surface level. Mm. You are going to do this by counting the number of times you're going to do it per day. So I might say something like, okay, I'm going to do one high value Reddit post. I'm going to do three replies on Twitter. And I'm going to do one Quora every day. How long total is that going to take you? Like 15 to 30 minutes maximum? And that is going to be infinitely more effective than the 30 minutes extra you spend editing a video or the 30 minutes extra you spend on your live stream or the 30 minutes extra you spend like on trying to figure out your product market fit or whatever. This is actual hand-to-hand -hand interaction like with, your, with potential customers, right? It's, it's basically evolved direct response marketing. So zero to one strategy I think can help basically almost anybody. I've even seen a lot of large brands engage in this. So if you go and you look at, some of you actually might even be familiar with this, um, you go look at uh, anybody like uh, Wendy's or Arby's, you'll see that on Twitter, they have 3.9 million followers. And if you go to their tweets and replies, they are super, super active, right? So even just like, obviously the guy's not working on, uh, but you can see this person is using zero to one, and this is a 3.9 million Twitter account, right? So, and it's just, it's just a person writing stuff that isn't really about Wendy's. Like this person's like talking about music, <laughs> right? It doesn't have to be, it's just, it's just engagement. And it works. So the, you'll, you'll see uh, a lot of companies that have revitalized themselves by building successful social media strategies are doing this. Um, I had a, a very successful Reddit um, just by engaging people and talking about the, like, their questions about their products and things like that. So what's so cool about the zero to one strategy and why it applies to a lot of people that are not um, only just like smaller creators is that the bigger that you get, the more stuff you have to talk about. So if you have like a product line, you talk about people that are engaging with your product that are that are working with your product. They're like, yeah, I, I've bought your product before. Oh, cool, tell me about it. Like, what do you do? Right, like there's more engagement there. So a lot of, like even very large brands can find a way to use this or delegate it out to a person and, and have that and like have that on their social media account. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's zero to one. So next we are going to go to one of the most important marketing concepts that I know about, I'm going to tell you about. But first, that's right. You've reached 24 minutes in a Devin Nash video. And if you're still here, I want you to tell me about it in the comments section down below. Thank you for being here. Um, hey, I got two really cool things to tell you real quick before we get into this really important uh, funnel strategy and syndication strategy as part three for growing a brand. And that is number one. Uh, if you are interested in this kind of thing, um, thanks, it's free. I would love for you to subscribe. Yeah, you can check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash Devin Nash, which is the link in the description down below. For $5, get access to over 70 videos that are um, all about business building and just being updated all the time. And that's it. Uh, there's other tiers if you want to look at them, but the $5 gets you all the videos. And the next thing that I want to talk to you about is my own agency's creation. It's a brand new product called Novo Nexus. Reach out to the bid in check it out at links or anything like that. You've done your zero to one strategy. You now have got that planned out and you've answered a lot of critical questions. You're gonna to wanna to start thinking about your actual marketing strategy, okay? And marketing strategy can best be described on what I call the funnel or the ice cream cone. And this is as follows. We're gonna draw. Oh, he's using, oh, he's using, that looks like a new, oh, I guess it's still paint on the inside, but it's, uh, man, it looks, Really updated and Windows 11, I guess. Circle. I don't like that circle. We're gonna draw this circle. We're gonna draw two lines. And you're gonna get your ice cream cone. All right. Now, um, I want you to think about one that is for ants. How do I make that larger? 
Oh god. There we go. I don't understand the new paint. 20? One lar one main platform intake top funnel and two small platforms and then ask. Okay? And we're going to explain that. So the idea is that a customer is going to st always start here, okay? At the top of the funnel. When a first in person hears about you, this is your YouTube view, this is your person coming into Instagram. It's not an engagement, it's just a person, it's, it's, it's what's called an impression. An impression means it's a person that is seeing what you have to offer, whether it be your content or whatever, whatever your value is, okay? Starts here. So your main intake funnel is going to be where customers find you. So it could be, uh, and, and there are different platforms that are better for this, okay? So for example, like uh, TikTok, fantastic place for people to find you. YouTube, fantastic place for people to find you, right? Twitch, horrible place for people to find you. Medium, not so good for places to find you. Really good for bottom funnel. And let me kind of explain what this concept means, right? So as a person comes into the top of the main platform intake funnel, they're going to go check you out more if they like you. And they're going to go check out things that you do as far down as they can go. Now you're going to lose customers at different parts of this. Either they're not interested or they just like fall out or whatever, or they're just not as dedicated, right? Like most people you're gonna lose right here. They're not even gonna fall into the funnel. The, most people they're just gonna, they're gonna see an impression of you. And then some percentage is gonna be like, that was cool. I'm gonna check it out. Depends on your value. Depends on how good your content is that you're creating. Depends on the brand you're building, right? But most people are just gonna, gonna fizzle out here. Don't be depressed, it's completely normal. The best of the best get fizzled out here. They get millions of impressions and their conversions are down, word are low, but people will check them out. And very few people will get to here. These are people that truly find value in everything you do and basically watch everything you do. Now I think here, if you want to, these kind of like last two or even this one, are where you can actually ask for anything money related. Everything else needs to be free and highly valuable. If you ask for anything money related, it's gotta be down here and it's gotta be behind something that is truly providing value to people, right? No BS. Way too many people are asking for money here, like maybe your first ask or even your second ask, like, hey guys, okay, check me out on YouTube. And then it's, oh, go buy my product, right? Like right in the middle of the video. So. Um, don't do that, right? If you're if you're going to do something like um, where you you are going to benefit from it in some way, make sure that your product is, or your service is really good or free. So, for example, like I just talked about ne uh, Nexus, our new service at, at our agency, um, that's free to the creators, right? You can just sign up for that and you just get deals. So there's no cost to you to doing that. That's why I offered that here, or I would never offer it here if it costs money or something. Um, so. I, I, here on the main intake and uh, is going to be where you decide on what your top funnel is. So it could be TikTok, it can be Twitter, it can be YouTube, it's basically how people find you. Then from there, you're going to have two smaller platforms that you syndicate to. And for this, I want to talk to you about um, long form strategy and syndication strategy. So what is syndication? I use that word a lot, actually too much. Syndication is taking a piece of content and pasting it, copy paste, somewhere else. Super simple. I take a four minute video that I do and I also put it on Instagram. Why? Because the idea is that there is a different user base there and there are people that are gonna consume that differently than what um, they, they, they found on, they never found it on the other platform, right? There's so many different people in the world that the uh, impressions that you get on Instagram versus the impressions you get on TikTok versus the impressions you get on YouTube or Facebook are going to be completely different. And you can, you can apply this anywhere. So like, there is no functional reason why YouTubers should not put their videos one-to-one -one on Facebook. The only reason is laziness, which is why I don't do it. But that, that is literally, there's no reason, right? That like, it's going to be a separate audience. It's going to be people that are gonna check you out that didn't find you before. Syndication is a great strategy. So typically, how a lot of content creators are doing work now is they have a long form strategy, which is like a video that's like eight to 12 minutes or longer, or a piece of content that's like eight to 12 minutes to consume or longer. And then they, they cut that down into shorter form content that they then put on their secondary platforms. So you might have, um, let's draw a couple of circles here. Red for YouTube here is gonna be your top of funnel. And then, why does it always do that? Okay, and then uh, what color is TikTok? I guess like black. This will be black for TikTok, will be your second small plat like, like platform that you're gonna syndicate to. I really, when I say small, I mean syndication. So um, 
let's uh, kind of like put that here and then kind of cross this out because that word doesn't like really make sense. Okay, so syndication. And then um, your, uh, maybe your third platform is like what? Like, uh, I don't know, Instagram? Uh, Instagram will be here, but it will be a circle. And this is gonna be how customers find you. And that's it, you don't wanna do any more because the more that you do when you're a small brand or a mid-sized creator, just you're gonna get overwhelmed and, it's, and, and none of your stuff's gonna be quality. That's why I, what I initially meant by small, what, what you really wanna focus on is this main platform right here. And you wanna do the work to put in the quality there. If you can't even get the quality on that one main platform, don't even bother to do the, the next two, right? Just, just like put the quality into the main platform that's gonna get you the results and focus on that. And this should be the entire focus of your top funnel. Um, and, and it should be the platform with the greatest growth opportunity that you have, as well as aforementioned strengths that you have it, um, here that you've decided that you have, okay? So long form strategy means you take one piece of like eight to 12 minute content, you cut it up into like maybe shorts that are like edited, and then you put it on two other platforms. But if you, if you are a small to medium brand, you can succeed by just posting consistently and improving your quality and being introspective on one main platform. You don't necessarily need to do the syndication strategy. The syndication strategy for smaller creators is usually so that you can, um, there's a lot of creators actually that they, they start on one platform, but they actually belong on another. So what syndication strategy actually does is you, let's say that you start on something like um, YouTube, but then you do a short and your TikToks take off and you're like a huge TikTok creator didn't even know it. Syndication actually allows uh, and increases the probability that you're gonna succeed. A lot of people, they um, like for, for streamers, for example, when you start a zero viewer stream, you should stream to like 15 different platforms. And the reason is because you might never take off on a platform like Twitch, but you could be you could be the world's biggest YouTube streamer and not know it, right? Um, or you could you could build a huge following on some other platform that you're not even aware of yet. So so what this does is just increase your options with absolutely no downside, and there's no reason why you shouldn't do it. Cool. So that is the idea of the funnel. And generally speaking, on um, funnel marketing, especially for like this video and like smaller brands, you really shouldn't even be thinking about like. I wouldn't even think about like here, right? Like the vast majority of people, I would say like YouTube, I would put it at like 50,000 to 100,000 subscribers. Twitch, you know, somewhere around that same follower count. Instagram, I would even put higher at like 200,000 to 300,000 followers. Twitter, uh, I'd put lower, like 50 to 100,000 uh, again. But, um, and TikTok like is weird, like follower counts like don't really matter. Um, and, and, and people are more used to advertising on that platform, so you could get started a little bit earlier. But the idea here is that you do not focus on monetizing and advertising until you are of those certain sizes I just mentioned. Now, I understand that that could be hard because you're probably thinking about, I wanna make money immediately, but um, I'm here to tell you something very important, which is um, something I, I, I'm gonna reiterate from the beginning of the video. If you are expecting instantaneous results on building a brand, that is a loser mentality and you are not going to succeed. It is really hard to build a brand and, 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 and building trust in other human beings is something that just innately doesn't come on the first or second impression. Take it like a date, okay? You're, um, you're dating somebody. Let's say, hey, come back to my house, be my girlfriend and um, let's get together. And it's like, you just met this person <laughs> 10 seconds ago at the grocery store. Are they gonna say yes? No, right? Like no one's gonna say yes to that or, or a very small subset of people and probably the ones you don't want are gonna say yes to that, right? Um, but if you build a relationship with that person over three to six months and then say that, right? Almost everybody would make that like, yeah, of course, right? So this is, apply that same principle like with relationships and friendship to how you talk to and interact with people that are following you, right? You want to actually provide real value and real trust to them before they engage and go sink down this funnel, right? And um, ideally, you should really hate to ask people. I think the best content creators in the world hate to ask people this stuff, right? The reality is you gotta get paid. And um, that's, just, that's just business. And for a lot of content creators, advertising is not gonna be enough for them, um, especially on platforms outside of YouTube where there are some YouTubers who just make money off of ads and they're pretty happy with that. But generally speaking, not gonna, not gonna like be a full-time type of thing. 
you kind of have to ask your customers for stuff eventually. And hopefully you're doing something that is valuable enough that when I was making 10, when I had 10,000 subscribers on YouTube on my old channel, that was enough for me to make a living. I don't know if it was just my content that converted really, really well, but that was enough. When you ask your customers, they're actually getting value from it as well. So it's not just like a, a raw ask, hey, give me money. They're getting something from it as well. Maybe it's an educational platform. Maybe it's an opportunity for them to grow, right? Um, whatever. Uh, there's a classic reason I don't do courses because I don't like the idea of asking my customers for money in exchange for learning something. I think I should do that for free. That's why I'm here doing this video for free, right? So uh, even if it's really good information, I don't want to get it there. A lot of people are thinking, hey, um, I just want to create content. I don't really care about this. I just want you to buy my thing. So all I'm doing is I'm making a video so that you buy my thing. That's why I'm really doing it. What you're doing is you're underestimating your customer. Your customer, people that are viewers, like they're smart. They, 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 they suss that out. They know when you're not really there to provide value and they know when you're not real. They, they, they know when you're just there to provide, like it's so obvious. I can't, and the problem is I can't describe how it's obvious. Um, there's something inauthentic. There's like a lizard brain thing that, that, that like, and I know all of you that are listening to this, you've, um, you, you've encountered it and you know it. You, you, you know when somebody is kind of BSing you and, and, and it's- Not always. Sometimes you find out way later as CoffeeZilla has shown time and time again. I mean, there's a lot of times there's very obvious tells, like when someone's promoting a crypto project, it's very obvious th their motives behind it. Um, but sometimes with other things, sometimes it's not until people figure out later. Not fitting right and that they're not really there to provide value. They just want something from you. Just like in real life, like, you know, when somebody comes up to you and is not about to provide you value, they're about to ask you for something. Uh, or they're about to sell you something you don't you know you don't want to buy. There's that feeling of kind of sleaze in that that you want to get rid of. So if you're in that mindset and you're here to make a quick buck, uh, brand building is not for you. I'd recommend direct response marketing or paid advertising. That's that's a, a much better feel for that. Some kind of direct sales where it's just like hey here like the 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 it's like a it's like the scales right. Um, the value of what I'm offering is just gonna be based on the product or service, that's it. Um, but brand building is really for people that want to build a trustworthy relationship with their audience and do not, hopefully in the long term, don't wanna screw them over. You wanna provide actual value, whether it be entertainment or education, and you're in for the long haul on that. If you are really one of those people, and we need more of those people in the world, then you really should only be thinking about this for absolutely as long as possible. It, it, um, if you are still thinking about growing, then thinking about this kind of stuff should be absolutely tangential. Do not think about it if at all possible. Use the techniques in um, here and really try to add, what I keep saying that word over and over again, just adding value, I mean, just like sitting back and thinking about what is something that I can say that will really move the needle for this person or some kind of experience that I have or some kind of uh, information that I've come across, video that I've watched, um, cool clip that I've seen, funniest comedy sketch that would make this person's day and send it to them with no expectation in return. And, and you'll find, I think, over time that you'll build authentic relationships with people just like you would if you were doing this in real life trying to build a friendship. It takes that kind of work and it takes that kind of time. And, and, and it's hard. It has to be hard or everybody would Hold have... Hold up. There is a person I have to call. One sec. Actually, you know what? I'll call while I'm on stream. Okay.
don't know anyone who can give me a, his phone number potentially, but I already looked it up. I think I know who it is, but maybe, maybe not. Who knows? Okay. I have a brand following. And the reality is like every single person on earth only has 24 hours a day and they can't increase that amount of time. And, and, and they've got to devote a bunch of that time to a whole bunch of stuff they can't help, like sleeping, family, obligations, job. So what... is going to be the thing that somebody is going to give you their absolutely precious attention for they can do it they can give you they can give their attention to anybody in the world why are they going to give attention to you and, and and why would they give attention to you if all you're doing is hammering them asking them to give you money you've got to provide something that is worthy of that attention so for every single person trying to grow a brand i challenge you to think about that what is the thing that is going to make it worth that person's attention and time so that I, that, that I know I'm taking from them, that I can provide them that value back 10x, 50x, 100x. This guy's thumbnails, man. They haven't evolved all that much, that's for sure. I mean, if it works, it works. <laughs>